have with me to discuss the budget 2020. I have Professor Abiodu Folawewo of the Department of Economics, University of Ibadan. Professor Folawewo, it's good to have you on State Affairs. Thank you, Edma, for having me. Good morning. And I must congratulate you for your recent promotion. Thank you. How does it make you feel? Well, I feel so good. You no, know, I've been labor for several years and then you no know, with anxiety that will, will this thing come, will this thing come, and eventually it came. Yeah. It feels so great. it feels good being called a professor. Definitely. And you are professing economics. <laughs> right. Looking at the budget, 2020, what is your overview? Uh, my quick overview of the budget is that, to me, I didn't see anything new uh, from what we have been having in the past, except for the fact that, except for the fact that, of course, as usual, it's a budget that uh, that is an increment over uh, the past one. So it's not pretty different from what we have been having in the past. So if it's not different from the past, it simply means the future will remain like today. Well, I hope it will not. I hope it will not. Uh, because seriously uh, speaking, as a country, we need to get ourselves together and have a deep thinking on what are the necessary things that we need to do to move the uh, country forward. The president talked about raising VAT from 5% to 7.5%. What is the implication of that? Well, VAT is consumption based us. Uh, to me, it's a good thing. It will uh, show up government and revenue. Uh, it will not in any way affect productivity because it's not a production based task. It's just a pure consumption based task. And if you look at uh, the proposal, some items which uh, I think the government must have thought necessary and uh, uh, basic for human consumption or human needs have been accepted uh, from the uh, VAT task. And to me, I see this as a welcome development. And uh, uh, what I will want to see in, in, in the nearest future is a situation whereby even we are going to have different fat rates across the country based on the economic situation of every of each uh, state. In that case, it should be run and managed by the state. I think so. Because uh, let me give you an example. Uh, if you go to the United States of America, we have to Three states are very close to one another. Uh, you have uh, the, the Delaware state, you have the Pennsylvania, you have the New Jersey. The VAT rate in Delaware is not the same thing as what you have in Pennsylvania. And it's not the same thing as what you have in New Jersey. In fact, if you go across uh, Pennsylvania and Delaware, you discover that there are, there are some goods that we are going to buy that we are not going to pay any fat on it. But if you, if you buy the same set of goods in Pennsylvania, you are going to pay fat on them. That's America. That, this is yes. Nigeria. Yeah, it's, it can also work here. And that's why I said it's not going to be an immediate something. But I said in the nearest future, that is where we should be heading to. Because let me tell you something. Uh, the living condition in Lagos, Lagos State, you cannot compare with the living condition in Ekiti State. What's the difference? Oh, in terms of their economic uh, provide, they are not the same. But you have, I believe, there are numbers of extreme poor people, larger number of extreme poor people in Lagos compared to Ekiti. Have we looked at that? I wouldn't believe. Uh, I, I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't believe that because I know if you go uh, to and you, uh, if you examine the poverty provide of the country, mm. you discover that. In the southwest, Ekiti State is a very poor country. You cannot compare it with uh, Lagos. And you are looking at the, the total figure. 
But if you are looking at the Lagos population of more than 20 million, you would agree that you have more poor people in Lagos compared to Ekiti, well, you know, with a very small population. What we do is we take the average. Okay. Uh, you, you take it per capita, mm. uh, per each state. And if you do that, Lagos State is not poor. And if you uh, uh, that tells you that an average person in Lagos is not as poor as what you have in Ekiti. If we also look at the per capita, you would say Nigeria is a bigger economy compared to South Africa. But what about the standard of living in both countries? Uh, I, I think uh, we need to get it right here. Mm. When you talk of absolute GDP, mm -hmm. you say Nigeria is a bigger country. But when you bring it down to per capita, Nigeria is not as big as South Africa. And that is what you are talking of welfare. Yeah. Because by the time you measure... Uh, the economy of a man's in terms of per capita, you discover that Nigeria is, is not even between number one to five in Africa. But mm. in absolute sense, you see, Nigeria is big. It, 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 it is the biggest con uh, economy in, in Africa. But when you bring it down to welfare issue, the per capita, you discover that even smaller countries, their per capita income are far, far greater than that of Nigeria. Let's look at the reason the president gave for exempting some products like coco yam and yam. The president said it's absolutely essential to intensify our revenue generation efforts. That said, this administration remains committed to ensuring that the inconvenience associated with any fiscal policy adjustment is moderated such that the poor and the vulnerable, who are most, most at risk, do not bear the brunt of these reforms. I think that is exactly what I said at the beginning of the uh, conversation. Now, um, I said those people that are supposed to know, they must have done the assignment that there are some common goods that are readily consumed by uh, those people at the lower income ladder. So you don't want to put additional uh, burden on them. Mm. Rem remember I said fat is a consumption-based uh, task. Now, you don't want to put additional burden on them because one, they are already down there. Their income is low and they consume these goods a lot. So if you raise the fat, it's going to affect them. Number one, it's going to reduce their purchasing power and it's going to affect their uh, welfare negatively. So the only thing even though government is trying to generate more revenue, but in doing that, you still have to be very conscious of your duty to the people, especially the vulnerable, so the vulnerable group, and that is what the government is trying to do. Will this exemption not defeat the essence of the increment? Well, Edmund, I don't think so. Uh, try some lost goods. Mm. A common man will not want to buy them. Yeah. It's those people that are uh, within the middle income group or the uh, high income group that are purchasing them. And the only way you can redistribute uh, income is to take as much as possible from these people. But what happens when the price of goods rises? What happens to demand? Well, when we look at price of goods and services, don't forget again that you have a whole, ba a whole lot of basket of goods. Those goods that usually move at uh, the general price upward are those common ones that have been purchased by the majority of people. So if the task is done in such a way that it's not going, it's not going to affect those common goods, no, uh, it, it will have minimal impact on general price level. And this time the president is saying that states will get 85% of the total amount realized from VAT. I read that and I listened to the uh, address by the government and I said, well, is we are getting somewhere. We are getting somewhere because the government has done a very good assignment, background assignment. That, no. Why will you have states uh, that are unable to pay worker salaries. Why you have? Why do you have states that depends on hand horns from the federal government all the time because they can do uh, the necessary things? 
Now, now, if you allocate a greater percentage of this fat to the state, remember, if, if you go back to my initial thought, mm. I said, I, I, I'm looking forward to a situation in the yeah. uh, nearest future, whereby you will even have uh, variations in the tax rate across states. Because remember that the states are the ones that are close uh, to the people. They need this revenue. than the better government. And of course, if still cannot pay their workers, they cannot do uh, essential things. It is uh, uncomfortable. So the only way, instead of running to government, go to federal, federal government all the time. Remember, federal government is not uh, Father Christmas. The only way you can help them is as much revenue we generate, you get the bunch of it. That is a relief, uh, which uh, to me is a welcome development. We are talking about an aggregate expenditure of 10.3 trillion naira proposed for the federal government in 2020. Is that amount good enough? 10.3 trillion naira. Can it take us anywhere? Two things. If we look at the past uh, budget, this is a bit higher than what we have in the previous year. Of course, that tells you that uh, in, in, in terms of expenditure provide, the government is actually trying to uh, increase the provide. But then, when you look at the size of the economy, when you look at the size of the economy, the question is, with 10.33 trillion, be enough to move the economy forward. We'll take it off from there after this break. I'm discussing with Professor Abiodu Folawewo of the Department of Economics, University of Ibadan. We'll be back after this break. Don't go away. <laughs> 